Hello streamers, Machine Dana from Stream Essentials. I hope you're doing really, really well. Hope you're having a great day. So one of the key components of anyone's stream is of course the webcam for those streamers that do actually have webcams. And that represents the majority of streamers that are out there. You can have great audio, you can have great gameplay, but if your webcam isn't right, that can put some viewers off and it may hinder your growth on Twitch, YouTube gaming or Facebook gaming. So with that in mind, in this video, I'm gonna be going through a number of things you can do to an existing webcam that you may already have that makes it a lot better than just the out of the box settings. There's about five or six different key things that you can do. And in this video, we're gonna be going through the filters available on the broadcasting software, the camera settings themselves on the software, LUT filters, I'll go through lighting, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about pixel stretching and that kind of thing as well. So hopefully you find this really, really useful, particularly if you just feel that the camera that you've got perhaps isn't quite good enough, but maybe isn't far away from that. There's a number of things that you can do that can just change that almost in an instant. Literally 20 minutes of work can make a really Really big difference here. Now, thing to bear in mind about webcams is if you spend a lot of money on a good DLSR or a mirrorless camera, that's clearly going to be out of the box a lot better than a webcam will be, but you can still get a pretty good picture from even a $50 or $100 webcam. And this video is really aimed at those people who are looking to spend somewhere between the sort of $50 to $400 mark. Maybe you've got an entry level DLSR or a mirrorless camera, or you've got maybe sort of a mid range webcam. If you find this useful, hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. You can also check my channel out as well on the link above. Comment below and let us know what webcam you have. We'd be really keen to know what webcam you guys are using. Let's go. I'm going to be using a Razer Keo ring light as the basis for this video, just to illustrate some of the differences that you can make. So we're essentially going to be trying to make an out of the box, low to mid range webcam look much better just by doing some treatment work to that camera. Now this camera I'm in at the moment is a mirrorless camera. It's a Sony A5100. It's a very popular camera. You're always going to get better quality by using a mirrorless camera or a DLSR because they're much more expensive. The sensors are better and there's a lot more essentially research and tech that goes into them in general terms. But if you're using webcam, there's still loads of stuff that you can do, and we're going to hit all of those in this video. So to illustrate this, I'm going to be treating that Razer Keo webcam within Streamlabs OBS, but virtually everything that I'm going to talk about here is transferable to pretty much every single broadcasting software, including OBS Studio, XSplit, and so on. So I've got a scene inside of Streamlabs OBS. I've just added a video capture device, and it's the Razer Keo. Now, this is pretty much what it looks like out of the box. If I right-click on this and look at the filters, there's nothing here. There's no color presets or anything like that. I can also go into the properties here and just look at all the different settings that are in here too. Now I'm first going to talk about pixel stretching because this is really, really important. Now out of the box, the camera looks this big. Now the resolution of this camera, as we just saw on the properties there, is 1920 by 1080. It's fitting those pixels into a small area and therefore the quality of this image within the canvas, which is also 1080, is going to be better. Now the moment you stretch a camera, you'll start to see some more of the pixels that are available. And literally, the more you stretch it, the more pixels you're going to see. You can see the quality is a lot worse there. The reason why I'm mentioning this is if you're not planning on having as a streamer any kind of full screen camera, a little bit like this, then there's no reason to stretch the webcam just for it then to be minimized onto a smaller section of your screen. So to illustrate this, if you've got a webcam that's going to be, let's say, about this big or maybe slightly bigger, you can just try resizing it a little bit to about the size that you need to be and then you're retaining the fidelity of the pixels. There's just no point in stretching the pixels out if you're then only going to stretch it back down again because you're sort of taking away fidelity from the pixels and that actually reduces the quality overall of the camera and it means that there's less to work with. That being said, if you are planning on having a full screen camera like this, you do need to think quite carefully about how big you want your resolution to be because if your webcam's only got 720p and you're working on a 1080 canvas, you're obviously having to stretch that by what I think quick math. 50%. There's still some pixel stretching that's going to have to happen to achieve a webcam look just like this. Next, I'm actually going to talk about lighting here. And to illustrate this, I'm going to turn off the lights that I've got. Now, I've got an Elgato key light here and a key light air here. So I'm pretty well lit here, although I tend to favor dimmed lighting rather than really bright lighting. And that's just a personal preference for me. So on both webcams, I'm talking about this one here and also the one that you see on screen here, it's pretty well lit. Now, the thing is cameras perform significantly worse when the lighting is bad 
the tech inside the camera, the sensors in the camera are having to work a lot harder to find, locate movement in the pixels. For this reason, if you have low lighting, you can even get dropped frames in the camera or a look that feels like it's dropping frames. So essentially, the more lighting a camera's got to work with, the better quality in general the picture is going to be. So if you find straight away that you're getting frame drops or apparent frame drops from the camera, just try upping the lighting in your room and that alone might make a really big difference. Now, lighting itself is a very big topic, so I'm not going to be getting into too detail about the different types of lighting that you can do. But if you find that the outline of yourself is not good enough, you can have backlights, you can have hair lights that sit behind you and soft boxes. And then, of course, you've got fill lights and other ambient lights like colored lights as well. The more thought you put into your lighting, the better quality your webcam is going to come across as. But just to illustrate the quality difference when turning off the lights, I am going to turn off the lights here and show you. Now, as you can see here, just doing that with my hand, it looks sort of like there's frame drops and immediately the quality of the webcam has also dropped quite considerably. It's a lot more noticeable on the webcam than it is on the mirrorless camera. Even just turning a single light on, for example, this one here makes a huge difference. And of course, the different styles you can go for. I tend to like to go for a two side, a little bit more lit. And the purple light I've got above and behind me just creates a little bit of ambience. Next up, I'm just going to talk about aspect ratio a little bit. Most cameras come with a 16 by nine aspect ratio. So if it's a 1920 by 1080 camera, you've got a 16 aspect ratio by 9 along the bottom. You just got to be careful here when you're thinking about the aspect ratio because it's better to crop out, for example, by holding down out and adjusting the outline of the webcam if you're trying to change the aspect ratio than it is to stretch it and then try and somehow cut out the pixels. So this kind of loops back into the first point I made about stretching of pixels. It's normally better if you can just crop out to get your aspect ratio than trying, for example, to cut it out by pulling the camera off screen. So if you can see here, I've actually pulled this more off screen. It means we're losing some of the pixels unnecessarily. A quick trick here, if you click on your webcam, right click and transform, you can set it to fit to screen. You can also set it to stretch to screen. Now, if you click on stretch to screen, that will make the exact aspect ratio of the camera match the exact aspect ratio of the canvas that you've got in your broadcasting software. So you want to avoid stretching to screen, particularly if the aspect ratio is different between the two. Fitting to screen will mean it will keep its aspect ratio of the camera, but it means that there will still potentially be some canvas available. In this situation, the aspect ratio of my base canvas is not the same as my camera. So rather than stretching the camera out over the screen like this, what I'm just going to do is move this to the left hand side. And I'm going to pull up the pixels from the bottom so that we can get the aspect ratio a little better. I can see there we're nearly there, so I'm just going to pull it up a little bit more. Now, all I'm doing is taking pixels away from the bottom for the sake of saving the fidelity of the rest of the pixels that we've got to work with. Now, here we can see we've basically not really lost any pixels at all, other than a few at the bottom. And of course, you can make adjustments to the camera itself if you're not quite getting that right. Now, as you can see, it's a pretty washed out picture. There's a lot of work we can do with this beyond just having good lighting that we now have. This particular webcam in itself comes with a light on it, so I'm just going to which will just increase the lighting a little bit. You can really see the difference in the colors here by taking a look at the color of my t-shirt here versus the color in the mirrorless camera here. So our objective now is to make this look as good as possible. So to treat this, the first thing I'm going to do is right click and go on properties. This is actually the properties of the camera itself. Now there's all kinds of different settings that you've got to play with here, including the resolution that you can set and the frames. In general terms for webcams, having lower frames will yield a better quality picture. But again, it does depend on how much you've spent on the camera and the quality of the camera itself. Some webcams operate pretty well at 60 frames, but if you find that you cannot get a good quality picture at 60 frames, try dropping it to 30 frames. And actually for a webcam, 30 frames is generally more than enough. In terms of color space, I personally find that working with 709 is better. Now I'm just going to show the difference between the partial and the full color range. Now initially on the eye, the full color range actually looks worse because it does drain out some of the other colors, but we can correct some of that later. Just notice on my nose here, the color of it and the way that the light looks. And now now when I put it on the full color range, you'll see the lighting looks much better. But of course, now we've got more of a washed out feel, but we can adjust some of these settings later to improve that. But you may not know that within OBS Studio, Streamlabs OBS, all the broadcasting software, there's always a configure video button that you can press. That'll pop up in this window here. And this just gives us a few more options that we can work with. So we obviously, we've got the options for brightness. Using full will increase the brightness. So I'm actually going to turn the brightness down a little bit because I'm happy to adjust the lighting based on my surroundings lighting rather than the camera's lighting setting. I'm turning the contrast down on the full color range has made immediately a difference you see here 
we get a little bit more color back. Now, if you like to have the deeper black colors, you can pull the contrast right down. But some people prefer to have a lot more contrast to have softer lights. Either way, a lot of it's just personal preference. Of course, now we can change the hue of it. I don't want to look like the Incredible Hulk. All this is for is to make micro adjustments to the hue if you want to make it slightly more of a deeper color of red or something like that. So for example, you might want to go from zero just up a notch or two and it'll give you a little bit of color back. Now, saturation is quite a big deal within the camera settings. It can really bring a hell of a lot of the color range back as well. If you're not happy with the tone of your skin, you can crank up the saturation and get a little bit of color back from that at base level. But you don't want to overdo that because there are also other ways that you can do that within OBS filters and look filters as well, which we'll go into detail about. So I'm just going to put up the saturation a little bit. Now, sharpness is basically personal preference here. Personally, I prefer a sharper look. But if you wanted to blotch out any skin textures that you want to get rid of, making a softer look gives more of that sort of Instagram look. And these are options that you've got within the camera settings. So I'm going to keep this at around about five here just to take a little bit of the softness away. I'd probably be inclined to leave gamma and white balance, although white balance... Now, depending on your camera itself will depend on how good or bad the white balance naturally is from the hardware that you've got, the sensor and so on. So you may have to manually adjust the white balance to fit your camera if you don't want that to automatically work. If you find that the white balance on your camera is just not that great out of the box. Now on the Razer Keo, I trust that the technology that Razer brings to the camera is actually going to be good enough. You can see when I uncheck this, I'm going to have to manually find the right point for this. It can be a little bit difficult to do that. So as the light's going to change potentially quite a lot in my room, I prefer to have it automatically done here. Now, if at any point you're unhappy with any of the settings or you want to revert back to normal, you can simply click default and it'll go back to what it looked like earlier. So I'm going to play around with these settings and get them to the level where I'm personally happy with. But as you can see, even just from clicking that default, there was a huge difference in the quality of the picture just from using the base camera settings. So the biggest difference you can see right now is the color of my t-shirt is a little bit more like the t-shirt on camera, but it's still not quite there, but it's definitely better than what it was earlier. I'm now going to go into a little bit of detail about the actual filters that you can use. So for filters, we're right clicking on the source. I want to click on filters. Now, there are some visual presets within Streamlabs OBS that you can take a look at, but not every broadcasting software has that. So I'm actually not going to go into the detail on the visual presets. I'm just going to manually click with a plus icon here and look at the different filters that we can apply. Now, first of all, I'm going to actually sharpen up the picture a little bit more. Now, the sharpening in my case for this particular camera, it's only quite subtle. So I'm only just adding a little bit of extra sharpening to it. Next, I'm going to look at the color corrections. Now here we've got more of the similar settings we looked at earlier, but this time they're inside of OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS or whatever broadcasting software you're using. Now I personally prefer a slightly more saturated look. So I've cranked up the saturation a little bit here. And because I want to go for a more softer look as well, I'm actually going to drop down the brightness a little bit so that it takes away some of the harsher lighting. Now I don't know about you, but it sort of feels like it's a little bit on the green side, just on the natural hue. So I'm actually going to use the hue shift with inside this filter to change the tone of my skin. No, not that much. <laughs> I think somewhere around about seven just gives me a little bit of color back to my sort of nose and face. Now this camera's already looking significantly better in my opinion. So next what I'm going to do is just talk a little bit about LUT filters. Now LUT filters are basically filters that you can buy online or make them yourself. Now in this video, I'm not going to be showing exactly how you make those because it's quite a long video, but you can shop around for them. They're very, very cheap or there are lots of videos out there that show you exactly how you can make your own LUT filter. Now making your own LUT filter basically is a way that you can go into some video editing software and literally design the color scaling of your camera. So as you can imagine, because it's in video editing software, for example, DaVinci Resolve, which is a completely free piece of software where you can design look filters or Adobe Premiere or something like that, it just gives you a much more significant range of settings that you can apply to the color grading. So here I've created a look filter, which is completely customized to my liking. So I'm actually going to select this and apply it to the camera and see what that looks like. Although I mainly use it on this camera here, so I'm not sure if it will work on the Razer Keo. To add the look filter, you simply right click, you go onto filters, we click plus here, and we're gonna select look filters from the list. Then we simply need to browse to the file that changes the color correction. So I've applied that look filter, but for this particular camera and this setting, I'm not actually quite liking the full mix of it. Now, I think that the look filter makes a little bit of a difference. It brings back a little bit more color, but it's a little bit overpowering, a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually turn down the amount to about half. I'm essentially applying half of that look filter there. And now the difference is a little bit more subtle. As you can see, when I click it off and this is it turned on, it's not as strong as it was earlier, just like that. <laughs> So just put this to 0.5. It's a more subtle approach to the look filter. 
Now, look filters can do all kinds of stuff. They can give like a cold, a warmer look, all kinds of different looks, which are far more complicated than just the filters that you've applied using the sliders within Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio. So just for illustrative purposes, I've reset all of the settings on this camera and I'm going to turn off the lights just to show the difference that it actually makes. So this is it with the lighting, but everything's set back to default. And obviously the picture I've got here was just a screen grab of what we achieved just a second ago. As you can see, huge difference in the two pictures here. So there you go. Hopefully you found that very insightful. Hopefully I've given you some ideas that you can walk away with to quickly implement on your webcam without having to go out and spend more money on a new webcam or a DLSR or a mirrorless camera. If you did find it useful, hit the like button because it really helps us and have a wonderful day. Take care.